think Mark Holmes, the son of John Holmes, has ever had Stephen Jones on four times on his show? Who in the world is Mark Holmes? Will somebody please tell me? By the way, back here, and so before we start this video, I gotta get this whole thing out of the way. Well, good morning, good people. Mark Holmes here, of course, with my buddy Cowboy Joe Boo. And as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. It is hump day, and the Dallas Cowboys will be on the practice field for day number two of minicamp, mandatory minicamp, where Micah Parsons is there, CeeDee Lamb, not so much. Um, for me, I am excited because I, I need to look up here on here. If you keep keep watch out here on the clock, you can see um, the dates and stuff on here, um, if it is working it's six five that's how, how at least i know how, how the day is but i think we are 92 days away from kickoff of the season yeah hit the like button like yeah hit, do all of the above i really need to maybe make this so it sits down here maybe a little bit lower i don't know but we'll figure that out but today we've got otas day number two and of course cd lamb is not here and there's no reason for the dallas cowboys to wait any longer to get this deal done um i will say for those out there that are going crazy about cd lamb not being there at practice i'm curious if you had the same energy last year with zach martin because zach martin held out through training camp and um I don't remember as much backlash and stuff with him. And here's the thing about Zach Martin, um, as opposed to CD Lamb. CD Lamb is going into his fifth year option. CD Lamb has literally seen everybody getting paid more than he is. Justin Jefferson, Devontae Smith, AJ Brown, uh, Jay on Waddle. And for him to have the second most catches and being an all pro and number one in yards, um, or did I get that backwards? Uh, it's one or the other. But either way, seeing all these people get paid, you know, he wants to get paid as well. And I don't blame him whatsoever. Micah Parsons, on the other hand, is kind of putting out there a little bit of feelers and things. And see, here's the thing that's you have to be careful with. Um, it's, it's one thing to hear something from the person's mouth it's different or can be perceived different when it's cut up and put in paper because something that may sound completely you know like i'm really dissing you could be said in jest and you have to take it in the context of what they're saying and of course everybody wants to have the got you you know headlines you know that and so on and in talking about micah parsons i remember last week i believe it was um, listening to Mike McCarthy, some of the comments that were made when you read them, they sounded really bad. But then when you actually watched the interview, you realize he was kind of kidding. You know, he's saying this with a smile and it's kind of backhanded. It. So what I wanted to do this morning is there's been so much talk and I've done it too, because I've taken, you know, what Jane Slater said or John Machado said and things like that and put it out there as, you know, is Micah Parsons doing this, that, and the other. Well, the Dallas Cowboys, of course, have the interview right here. And I want to listen to it with you guys so that way there's no misunderstanding. Okay, so let's let's listen in here to Micah. Uh, obviously, I did it last year, but we go international. We have camps. All, we did camps all across Europe, but this year um, we did it all across. Uh, kind of we did one in uh, Shanghai, uh, China. And we had a big one in Tokyo, and that's where Flex works. Um, we're just trying to spread the brand of football. And then there's a lot of kids who are, you know, paper, parents are in the army, so it's good for them to like see us and like their experience is great because obviously football is not so big down there. So you know, I think it's always an amazing opportunity to do that. Sumo wrestling's big. Yeah. Yeah. Nah, sumo's legit. Like I. <laughs> 
So at first, uh, I was like, man, I'm gonna do that. Like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna hop in there. And so they have tears. And the tear that I had was like, you could put it like, as if he was like in like, the kid was 17 at the so he's a high schooler, really. And uh, there's like tears, like, so there's black belts and the white belts. And I could show you a video of the white belts. And, they're completely different. So it's imagine uh, a, a zero tech and a, a center doing in the Oklahoma drill every play without pads, and it's like so wow. violent. And it's like you still want to do. I was like, nope, that's a walking concussion. I was like, you guys get a lot of concussions. It was like, yeah, but it's just a part of it. I was like, nah, it's not a part of my sport. Yeah, you know, how I was like, so and sumo wrestling is a completely different. Their techniques, their uh, style is so mind-boggling. Like, they tried to show me a couple things and I just failed completely. Like, uh, very challenging, had my legs shaking and I was like, man, I need to do more legs. They do legs every day. So, you know, hitting them's like a brick wall, really. So I think they'll be, if, they wouldn't be good offensive linemen because they can't move that well. But you put them in a zero tech, say, don't move. Oh man, that'd be great. So I'm recruiting some as we- Uh-oh. <laughs> All right, so you, haven't been, you haven't been here as frequently as others. Mm -hmm. What was the thought process behind that? I mean, I think that's always been kind of my style. Uh, I think I really haven't been here since, like, what, my rookie season. So I don't think it's anything new. I think I always had, like, my own way of doing things. Um, and, you know, defense is defense. You know, I'm pretty much caught up on everything. I went over it. Paul was meeting up with me, um, the run game coordinator. So I really wasn't missing anything. So I feel like I was just getting better, getting stronger, getting uh, faster. You know, just doing my things and what I what Mike does in the off season. Russ is yeah. sumos, so I just have fun. But a lot of people are, are obviously there's talking points about the fact that you do have a defensive court, a new defensive coordinator here, and the value of just in terms of leadership too, getting around uh -huh. the young guys. What's your pushback on that? Yeah, you know, I think the more years you have in, the more you understand that there's also, like, the business side to it. And, uh, you know, whether I like it or not, there's rookies or people I came with that's not even here anymore, you know. And mm -hmm. I think that's what camp is for. I mean, there was a time where Aaron Donald didn't even go to camp and he won defense player of the year and he really his team in playoffs. Like, are we forgetting these times? Like, he wasn't – you're talking about the best defensive player wasn't even in uh, camp. And we're in mini camp. Right, I voluntary at that. So, you know, camp would say something that's mandatory. So I'm just looking at a time for my body to heal. I'm playing, I'm an undersized rusher who's gets banged up every year. So I'm just letting my body. I'm going to stop here for a second because as I listen to this, as opposed to what I read, the way it came across when you were reading it was, you know, Micah Parsons says, you know, Aaron Donald didn't show up for training camp and things like that and so on, you know. And so you're hearing this methodically spoken. He's like, you know, we're working on the international game. You know, we've got people that are in Japan that are in the military and things like that. We're spreading the game. I'm learning and stuff, different techniques with sumo wrestling and taking care of my body and resting. And that comes across totally different than the way it sounds like in the quotes. Let's listen some more. I'm just trying to grow, strengthen, and uh, really just get ready for the year. In the offseason, you had said we were still in off season. You're talking about chemistry. There was yeah. some issues with chemistry. And then with you not being here as frequent, some would say, well, aren't you contradicting yourself when you talk about chemistry within this team? Well, I would say, you ever watch Remember the Titans? Uh, we're going to be in Oxnard a very, very long time. There's going to be a lot of chemistry in that building. And I think that's really the time where you see everything. Like, it's hard to really teach someone without pads or true contact or hand points like it's just not realistic we can't even touch each other we're going to lose a draft pick or something like that like it, it's just it's it's outrageous not even really uh i think right now it's just more technique it's a lot of walkthroughs right now nothing to anything so for my position where i'm at it's a lot of individual and i could be doing a lot of individual by myself or with my trainer have you talked to any veterans about this is the way you should do it or not do it like do you have mentors that you've sort of said, what should I be doing with my body? Like, where does this come from? Well, understand the business side of it too. You know, your body, this is all I have. This is all I have to offer the Cowboys. You know, before you sign a contract, you go through a physical. Before you do anything, before you're even on a team, you gotta go through a physical. Like, this is your end, end like, you know, this is your engine. Like, this is where all my equity lies. I have no equity 
outside of this to offer them. So at the end, you gotta understand, you know, um, availability is the best ability. And if I'm not available when it really matters because I'm banged up or my body's not healing properly or I didn't get all the rehab and treatment that I need to be successful, then, you know, that's on me. It's not on them. They're just finding next me, you know, so. Um, what pushback? What if other teammates started to do that? I think some do. Some people still do. Uh, they still go to other trainings outside of this. They still do that. Like, um, you know, it's a normality, really. I think I don't think one person just uses the team trainers and things like that. The building relationship part, how is that within the locker room and that kind of thing? Because when you talk about chemistry, you also think about that. I mean, you don't just build relationship in the locker room. I mean, me and Chauncey just went to Columbia together. And Sam was there too. I mean, I don't think a locker room is the only way I build chemistry with my teammates. Now you're talking about rookies. I mean, I come in here and I sit in a cup tub and I talk to some of the rookies. Like, just because I'm actively not here at the designated time doesn't mean I don't come in. Michael, you talked about the business side with CD handling his business. You had him on your podcast and you guys talked about it. Just how do you kind of view his situation? Oh, I mean, CD about to hit the brink truck. <laughs> <laughs> this is totally to different than what? Uh, but I, I can't oh, think of someone right. more deserving. You're talking about hand in hand. I think CD's, you know, the best receiver in the league. If not, if you ever want to argue a top three, but in my eyes, uh, seeing his mindset, how he comes every day, I think he deserves every penny. So I'm gonna be super excited for him for whatever his contract lays out. But uh, it's gonna be a nice contract for sure. And if you were an agent, what would you pay him? More or less than Justin Jefferson? Oh, I mean, if I'm his agent, CD's getting about 36. <laughs> but I'm not his agent. I don't think, you know, numbers aside, I don't know, obviously, what goes on, what's the combative arguments on who and who or whatever it is that may be. But, um, I mean, if Jefferson said it, I think uh, you could argue that CD's better, however you want to put it. But um, CD should be right there with him. But so you is the Bears truck, you, you the truck coming for you? I mean, one day, time will tell. You know, I can't really put a timetable on mine. All I got to do is keep getting sacks, and, you know, that stuff's going to handle itself. Mm -hmm. As players, do you guys kind of respect when a player is holding out to handle his business in the way that he is? Yeah, you understand that business I say. You know, why would CD come over here and pull a hamstring or, you know, God forbid anything just stupid happens and that ruins his equity in his body. That's his engine, you know, but CD's out getting better. You know, I got CD on everything. I know how hard he's training. Um, he's super excited for this year. Just let the numbers handle the numbers, and he'll be back. What about your conversations with Coach McCarthy this offseason? Having been here a little bit, how do you feel like your communication with him has been? Oh, me and Coach McCarthy are super well. Uh, we met for an hour or so just the other week. I think people don't understand how much more I think McCarthy's invested into me on becoming a leader and uh, what he thinks I value the team and where we're headed. Uh, so I think me and McCarthy is really good, and I actually value our conversations and our relationship growing more uh, as he's been here. And I think that's very powerful to me because, you know, uh, obviously I think he's kind of took on the challenge of when Dan left to kind of be that voice for me. and I. I really appreciate that. Does it disappoint you at all that the team hasn't done more this offseason? Here we go. Podcast after the season ended about being all in and making all these big moves. Does that disappoint you at all? Uh, it doesn't disappoint me. You kind of, If you kind of figure out how the money goes and how the contract goes, you kind of understand that business side. I think CD takes up the value of two or three players. You know, that's you're talking about 30 plus million a year. That's, you know, yeah. two or three guys. So, you know, uh, if you do that, how can you afford to pay CD Lamb? You know, and you know that goes on for other guys potentially. So, I think the mindset I have is we have seven all pros, or you know, whatever the count may be. It might be more, it might be less, or we got at least three guys that I know can be all pro. I think Ferguson could be an all pro guy. Um, you know, I think a lot of guys are gonna have breakout years. So, you know, I think that plays a count to it too. You know, Tyler Smith, I think he'll be a first team all pro this year, and you gotta think about him towards the future. So. When you talk about all these guys, it just leads to say, hey, when are the other guys going to step up and be better for the team? In the old days, they would say, you need to come to everything, right? All the voluntary, whatever, even though it was voluntary, you know. Mm -hmm. You think that's changing with this generation of players? I don't think it's changing, but I think some people definitely get paid to be here, mm -hmm. and I don't think people take that account either. Like, you know, some people get paid a whole bunch of money to be here, and some don't, and I'm not one of them, so. Right. That's... <laughs> Now, I'm going to say that that's the quote right there that, that's really got a lot of venom in it because it says a lot of people get paid a lot of money to be here and I'm not one of them. That's what, it, 
<clears throat> excuse me, one of those subtle messages to basically say, listen, I'm only getting $5 million this year. I'm only getting $5 million. That would be great for me. I'd be ecstatic. But for what these guys have to do to get to that level and to stay on that level, as he pointed out, he says, you know, there are guys that were drafted my rookie year here as well that are no longer in the league. And the fact that I'm playing at this elite level, you got to get while you, what you can get when you can. Let's finish this off. This is great stuff here. And this, I'm going to say that, you know, instead of just getting the headlines and the quotes and the bits and pieces out of here, you really need to hear the whole thing in context. Because I will say I, I was completely wrong in the way that I was presenting the pieces that I heard. I feel totally different about this after hearing it. What? 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 Why'd we lose it? Okay, maybe we're not going to hear it. Some don't, okay. and I'm not one of them, so. There we go. <laughs> that chatter of the old school mentality. Uh, everybody should be there. Mike should be there outside the building. Do you, does that bother you? People say that? I mean, people say things about the podcast, and I'm a president. How'd that look? You know, people always got a perspective. Let you let go. people have a perspective. You guys have your perspective of how the team building, and I have my perspective how it's building. Um, you guys have perspectives of who we should sign. I have perspectives of who we should sign. Everyone's due to their own perspective, whether we like it or not. So, um, shout out to freedom of speech. You, you talked think about you need a how poker much? face a little bit more, especially mm -hmm. during the draft. You think you need a poker face? Nah, I, I don't need a poker face. <laughs> you know, I like I like like I like what we're doing. I would say that. You know, I think. Uh, just being out here today, uh, I definitely think people are going to be very, I think, surprised how good we really are. You, you talked about uh, uh, the way your body feels and, you know, you get beat up during the season. Are you back now to feeling 100%? And if so, when did you get to that point? How long did it take you after the season? Bro, it really takes me months to really get back. You know, it takes me months to even hit the field. Like, I don't hit the field until May. Like, I really take time to build my ligaments back up, get a lot of PT, uh, do a lot of muscle endurance things to get my muscles back. You got to train your muscles to get back. Working properly and fluently if you do anything about uh, training. So I don't want to hit the field until about May, June anyway. Weight wise, are you the same as last year? Is that the mm -hmm. goal? Weight wise, are you trying to be the same as you Yeah, were? I don't think I should pass 250. I'm super explosive. I think I was way stronger. I think I've, you know, showed a lot of things that people thought I couldn't do. And uh, I think people will even be more surprised this year. What are your early impressions of Mike Zimmer? Honestly, man, me and Zim probably said a total of 20 words to each other. Oh. Yeah, he's he's a he's a very quiet person. And all I keep hearing from the coaches is like, Zim likes it this way. I was like, well, I like it this way. Like, you know, so I can't wait to have, like, my true, like, sit down with him. I think it'll be pretty cool. Because obviously, old school mindset, old school mentality. Um, but, you know, I think he has a lot of great players, but he ain't never have a mic before. So um, it'll be fun, and I think it's going to be unique. There's a lot of similarities on things, how he used me with how uh, Dan used me in the system. But he has more tweaks in terms of how he's going to set things up. And also, there's some things that I got to get used to, too. Uh, you know, it's going to be a compromisable relationship. There's going to be things he's like, I'm not going to give on, I don't give on. That's a part of the whole regime, you know? It's gonna be an interesting camp. Yeah, it will. <laughs> a long camp. A long, long camp. camp. We're down there to like the 24th. It's gonna be a full month this time. Yeah. And it's not gonna be that two, three weeks. It's gonna be longer. Yeah. We got a scrimmage with the Rams. Yeah, Wait it's a gonna be a very long camp. Oh, did, did you just hear that? It's gonna be a very long camp. We're gonna. It's not gonna be like the two week. Oh snap! That. Oh, okay. So. This is going to be interesting because, see, and maybe maybe this is going to be totally different because um, we've heard that the Cowboys are going to be practicing against the Rams. We know how those practices get physical. Usually they're fighting and everything else, which we heard about on the 8th or the 9th, of course, before the preseason game. But Micah Parsons just said, we're going to be there for a month. That may be totally different. I can't wait to see the whole schedule. Oh, Wow. Wow. So that's going to be interesting, to say the least. And I, I'm going to say that listening to the whole interview, you have you get a different feel than just the clips that you got from it. So 
yeah, I'm, I'm, I feel clarified. I feel better about Micah Parsons at the moment. Um, you know, seeing some of the, the headlines of some of the, uh, the the media, some of the new media and things like that are like people are sick of, you know, Micah Parsons is wearing out his welcome or, you know, breaking cowboy fans' hearts and stuff. I saw something this morning, a uh, rumor that uh, he was talking about, you know, if he doesn't play in Dallas, he'd like to play um, for Mike Tomlin and the Steelers. So now, yeah, I saw a headline that Micah Parsons wants to be a Steeler. It, it's kind of like everybody is trying to infer and twist and turn to get like, I, I don't know if it's the clicks or to try and get in the window into a soul of what he may be thinking. But that's not what I get from him. What I get from him is my body has been destroyed during the season. I have, you know, basically start running out of gas by the end of the year. I need my body to heal for a couple of months. I don't start running and really getting on the field until May and June just to let my body get together, let my ligaments, you know, recover, let my muscle and tendons kind of heal before I put them through the strain. And there's a lot to that. And this may be, so I, I, I guess I can say for certainty, Micah Parsons will be on board with what the NFL Players Association is proposing, that OTAs be basically moved to basically be part of training camp, that you start out training in middle of June, early July, doing your OTAs and everything right through through training camp. Um, and it sounds like, and I don't know, maybe maybe he's got a window towards uh, Mike Zimmer and the plans of being a more physical training camp. I would love that because I think part of the problem for the Cowboys is the mental toughness that it seems like we're missing when it comes to the playoffs. And unless you've been in those battles and those fights and having a tough camp and stuff, you may not um, have experienced it. You understand that you go through Camp Cupcake and all that. You play the games during regular season and stuff. And then come the playoffs when things are shit is hitting the fan. It's a little bit different. So I like what I hear. I like what I hear from Micah. So that's what we have right now. And um, we'll see how it goes. I appreciate you guys. I've got some work to do. We got Dan Salio at 3.30 today, so um, join in for that. You know it's basically a rumble in the jungle. And I'm going to keep uh, Philly 500's feet to the fire on being there at that game. All right, good people. We will see you real soon. Peace out. To you by Lincoln Mercury. Nobody has four kinds of cars or four kinds of people. See them at the sight of the cat. By Goodyear, makers of the custom steel guard radial tire. And by State Farm Mutual. Almost anywhere you live, there's a State Farm agent nearby. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there.